welcome to part three of my KeyCAD tutorial. Today we're going to deal with the footprints and the net list. So where do we leave off? We've got all the parts. We found them all on DigiKey. We got the DigiKey part numbers in here. We got the manufacturer names in here. We're looking really good. We even picked a footprint for this guy. Now, what a footprint actually is, let me go ahead and edit this. It's the only one that we did this for. We assigned it a footprint. Why did we do that? This is one of the most critical parts because it's a very vendor specific part. The odds are that you could never find anything from any vendor other than CUI that would actually fit into these three holes holes and um uh, and uh, therefore when i put the part in the schematic at the very beginning i made sure that i found one that i could buy on digikey that's in stock and it is this pj 102 ah i picked this one in absolutely in particular solely because it's one of incredibly few uh foot uh barrel connectors and jacks that they have on the standard keycad library so that we uh can can get through this task without actually designing designing any new footprints. So KeyCAD provides everything we need to finish this schematic. So what we need to do is finish assigning each one of these a footprint so when we go over to the PC board, it knows what they look like, what the copper is supposed to be, where the holes are. That's what the point of this particular part of the process is all about. So what do we do here? We can go to each one of these one at a time and do that, or we can use one of these buttons up here that allows us to do a whole bunch of them at once. Let's do it. Let's review the manual process before we do the automated thing so that we keep our bearings on ourselves. Um, once you know exactly what footprint you want, and in your head you kind of already know what it looks like and so on, then you can use the, ba the, the batch method. But the, the, the thing about the batch method, and let's open it up here, that's this button right there. It says here's all the parts that need to have footprints. There's the one that we've already assigned, and here's all the rest that still need them. Well, if you happen to know that this is an 0805 and you want a hand soldered part and so on and you know what they call it over here you can do that but if you need sometimes like me I need to see the picture of it well you you use the other method the more cumbersome but you get to see it method so as you get better at it you can just go faster um, let's take a look at this while we're here I wanted you to see what's going on I think by default when you open it up the first time it's in this mode you saw me click these two buttons what this is is it says look uh, without any of these options selected out you say you want to assign a footprint to this capacitor C1 if you remember from the last video I I pre picked out all the parts I wanted to purchase from DigiKey and I happen to know these are 0805 footprint surface mount parts and I could go ahead and find it in this list this is every footprint in, that all of KeyCAD knows that's a lot if you click this button right here it says look filter out and only show me the things that claim to be associated with these part IDs which is a capacitor in this case well these are all the capacitors all right in fact, these are, yeah, the through hole and the surface mount. That's kind of foolish that they give me both through hole and surface when I happen to know it's surface. Um, actually, KeyCAD does not yet know it's surface mount, now that I think about it. Um, this button over here, it says, not only do I want to know the type, also filter and only show me the things that have the right number of pins. Some capacitors actually have three pins on them. So if you select both of these, nine times out of ten, this will shrink way down and make it actually possible for you to recognize what you want in here. And if I look, I'm pretty sure that's the part that I want. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it to C1 just for the sake of, of, of demonstration here so that I've uh, got one picked. I use the hand solder on all my you know, when you're getting started, trust me, you want to use the hand solder footprints. The 805 without the hand solder are actually smaller, and none of the metal actually will stick out from underneath the part. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this one part. I'm going to double click it, and now that's assigned to C1, and I'm going to leave the rest unassigned as they were. Okay? Now we go over to C1, which is this guy right here, and hit E you'll see it has a footprint assigned because I just did it. If you go down here, this one does not. Okay, so this is all jives. Let's go ahead and edit this. Open up the browser. Now, every time you open the browser, this thing will show you the last part that you chose or the part that's currently assigned 
to the component that you're editing. So this is the currently assigned one. If we look around in here, we can see that we have the same options. If I click between the regular part, and I the problem is the zoom is kind of screwy on this. You see the, the relative dimension of this? It's uh, pretty wide, but not very long. This other one here, it's the same width, but it's longer. Having a little bit of copper stick out from underneath the part, it helps hand soldering a lot. So when you're getting started, trust me, you want to use these hand soldered parts. That's what I wanted to show you um, in the by opening up the viewer. If we go to all these other parts now, and we click on footprint there, and then we do this, like I said before, if it doesn't have anything assigned, it, it shows you what was last chosen. So it's actually convenient. You can go through each one of these now and do this if you want. I'm going to leave these other two unassigned to show you over here. Once again, once you get used to this, you can see there's the two that I've assigned, right? And it's right here. If I go here, you can see it's still highlighted right there. It's real easy to just do this, okay? You don't have to open every menu and keep hitting OK and clicking buttons. Very nice, okay? The same thing goes for resistors. I still have these two guys over here selected. So it says, uh, I want to see resistor-like things. Now, these are called something with an R. These are not resistors, but they're fooling the KiCad library into thinking maybe they are because they put an R in there, I think. I don't know. But I'm going to use an 0805 hand solder just like I did with the capacitors. I happen to know this is the right one. If it's not the right one, you can go again and use the other one with a picture and kind of figure it out. Uh, why don't we do that for the LED and these other ones? Since it's kind of cheating, since I already know that this is right, and we started with this one already selected. So let's go ahead. And no, these don't have footprints yet. So let's edit one of these, all right? And I want a footprint. Okay. What do you do? We know it's not a capacitor. Now what do I do? Well, that is a surface mount transistor which is a package, okay? It's a, it's a package that is a um, SOT surface mount. These are uh, surface mount de device, okay? Now, which one is it, okay? If you remember from the data sheet, it said that the H package, which is the one that I chose, is SOT223. See how this is 1234? The data sheet looks like this. Is that the output comes off of these two pins. So you have to be incredibly careful to make really sure that you got the right one. I can't stress enough to go back to your data sheets and be really sure that the, these numbers match correctly. Okay, we have these two are connected together, so they have to have the same ID or pin number on them. That's the part that I want for my uh, voltage regulator. So I'm going to edit this one, browse footprints, and it says here's the last one that I used. It's still highlighted over here. That looks good. Uh, the LED was not assigned. Let me hit E to edit this. Footprint, browse. Now what do I want? I want an LED. This is a through-hole LED with 0.1 spacing, as you remember from the data sheet last time. So where's the LED? THT is through hole, surface mount, through hole, all right? If you don't remember, you start clicking on them and say, let me see what they look like. Well, these are obviously surface mount. THT is through hole. Now, what do we got? We have a three millimeter with a dome top. Now, I don't know why they care whether it's clear or flat on top. It doesn't change the footprint any. Oh, I know why this is. You'll see when we edit the PC board, the fact that they actually have a different footprint, it's not the footprint that's different. What is different about it is this has a 3D model associated with it, and you can actually generate like a, a CAD drawing of your board that shows all the parts. And if you pick the wrong one, it won't have the right, uh, it won't look correctly. So, all right, so what are we looking at here? Remember, it was a, a three millimeter with a 2.54 spacing on the leads. So this is clear. I don't know what three millimeter is. Maybe that's a generic one, a generic three millimeter one. Uh, that's a three pin three millimeter one. I'm going to get the generic one. If it's wrong, we can always come back and change it. I'm pretty sure that's the one that we want. Okay. Uh, I think we already chose the resistor. Uh, yes, an 0805 surface mount. Uh, we did the capacitors already. Now we need these connectors. I purposely want you to see the pictures of these. 
Okay, browse footprints. Now, what are those? Those are some kind of a connector. Sometimes you want to use a terminal block or whatever. These are connector. There's a bunch of different kinds. There's our barrel jacks we saw earlier. This is, what is this? These are pin headers. Now, look very closely. These are one millimeter spaced, 1.272 and 2.54. Make sure you pick the right spacing. I once accidentally picked this, and of course, it won't fit. You need to pick the one that matches the pins you have. The 254s are the kind of headers that are on Arduinos and Pies and stuff like that. These are the overwhelming common ones that are the big physical pins that just stick out of your board. And it's critical because this is the spacing of the pinholes on our breadboard that it needs to plug into. So what do we have? Just like when we were looking at the parts, see you got a 1x13, we need a 2x2. Two two. Here we go go there's a 2 by 2 horizontal that's the kind that sticks up and then sticks over to the right that's not what you want this is the vertical one okay that is the one i think we want they have one surface mount the one with the angle bent pins and stuff if it goes through holes that's the one that you want right there and i'm double checking in my mind because i'm speaking and i always make mistakes when i'm talking 2.54 that is the one okay Okie dokie, let's go ahead and edit this one and do the same thing. It's still chosen. There we go. All right, save this. Let's now look at the uh, footprint editor. Did I get them all? Okay, everything now is a footprint. Great. Now that we've got footprints, we can create what's called a net list, but let's do let's look at these this edit symbol fields button first let's see what we've got in here what does this menu do it lets you see all the fields of all those editors in one single screen which is really nice i can see <laughs> that i made a mistake here this i have two separate uh digit key columns i in the last video you remember i typed it in all uppercase by mistake once the lousy caps lock key which should never be on any keyboard i don't know why it even exists in this day and age uh must have been clicked on and I accidentally uh, did it wrong. I thought I corrected that, but I guess not. Okay, so this doesn't have a footprint. The J... Um, oh, there's not a footprint. These are the DigiKey order numbers. I didn't tell you how to buy this at DigiKey because I assume you have these lying around. I didn't tell you how to buy a resistor because I assume you have these lying around as well. Uh, you might not. Maybe we'll go back and find one. I don't know. I'll add it later. Anyway, uh, this is needs to be fixed. So what do we need to do? We need to go to U2 and make sure that I didn't screw that up. And cancel this. U2. Edit. See some fool type this in wrong. Now it's lowercase. Case matters on those. I'm going to hit Control S to save it. Open up this little symbol dealy now. Okay, now this is nice and clean. When you use the, the bill of materials export tool, which I'll talk about in some other video, you end up creating a nice file like this with, that you can open up in Excel or something like that or some spreadsheet in LibreOffice or whatever you want to do. Uh, I open it up here just so that we can kind of sanity check. We know these two have the same footprints. That's good. And all the parts are in there. All the DigiKeys stuff is in there. This now looks good to me save it now when i'm clowning around i might have broke something so i'm going to do one last electrical rules check and i got no errors beautiful because maybe you know i disconnected a wire without knowing by accidentally clicking on something this schematic is essentially done now all the parts are in there i can hit this net list it says generate net list i take the defaults use whatever format it wants to go into this file which is named based on the project and put it in the same directory as the project all this is fine and dandy now i'm done at this point i hope i have everything i need done and that i didn't mess up my drawing or anything i can now make a pc board so in the next video what i'll do is i'll start from the net list and we'll open up the pc board editor and go from there we'll finish this thing up. If you thought this was useful, give me a thumbs up or let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.